Finally today, on a much lighter note, probably few teachers would consider using a medieval siege weapon to teach their students about technology. But Corey Weinsberg isn't like most teachers. Joining me now is our Lisa Hines. Well, Rob, every year when the pumpkins are ripe, people from around the world gather for a competition called Pumpkin Chunkin'. And when one Oklahoma teacher saw the event, he knew his students had to take part. Three, two, one. From air cannons shooting pumpkins at close to 700 miles per hour to catapults called trebuchets hurling pumpkins high into the sky. The World Pumpkin Chunking Contest brings people from around the world to put their engineering skills to the test. Career Tech Welding Instructor Corey Weinsberg. Watching pumpkin chunking on Thanksgiving three years ago. The week we got back, I said, guys, let's build us a pumpkin chunker and we're going to build a trebuchet. And so we went to, we had one built within three days and was trying to get a baseball going the forward out of it. And, and, and we now have it to this three years later. But why a trebuchet? Why not? I mean, it's, it's a class project where we get to design it, we get to build it, and the students get the real, the real deal that they're going to do out in industry. And uh, it's a fun project and it's great for recruiting too. And Corey says they started out with small prototypes. We built them to where they would collapse and fail and research and de design and development and uh, experiment and trying to see what materials we should use and not use. So that helped out a whole lot in the design of our big one. Now for Chuck Profit, Corey's teaching method using the trebuchet keeps his interest. I love it. It's a cool experience. Um, Came down here from Utah to get in a welding program, found Corey Weinsberg, hey, put me in the program and at NTC in Little Kansas, Oklahoma, put me to work and shown me everything that I know as of right now. I mean, I've seen it on pumpkin chunking, but you know, we made one and you know, I was just mind blowing. So what do you do with a colossal machine once it's built? You use it. We took it to Bridgeville, Delaware last uh, November and we competed in the youth trebuchet division with my students and set a new world record. A record of 2,402 feet. Very impressive, considering the previous record was 1,526 feet. Oh, we won, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Joseph Ramirez was there and said there really wasn't much competition against them. Our machine's too powerful, and we're gonna get the adults next year. Yep, you heard right, adults. Because they won last year as a student team, they now have to compete against the adult teams. So our fingers are crossed for them. But to help hone their skills, Corey is laying down the gauntlet. We need some competition. That's a fact. We need more other welding programs or any other program that's willing. We'll host a contest somewhere out here maybe. We want some competition in Oklahoma. For sure. Now I wanted to show you firsthand what it would be like to be hurled through the air. But unfortunately things didn't go quite according to plan. So what happened? Well Rob, we took this little old camera of ours that we've had since about 2007. It's seen better days. And Corey's class developed a little case so that we could attach it to the bowling ball. And that way we could just throw the bowling ball with the camera. Everything was going great until it landed. And then I think it landed directly on the camera and smashed it and the SD card got corrupted. So we didn't get the video, but it was a great idea. Now, I also understand the camera wasn't the only thing put at risk on this shoot. No, let me show you what happened. Uh, as the very first shot of the day, everything was going great, and then the rope broke, and the bowling ball went straight up into the air, into the sun, you couldn't see where it was. So everybody is scurrying and trying to get out of the way. And if you'll notice the little lady in the black jacket there. That's me. I run in for my life trying to escape this bowling ball, but you don't know where it's going to land. Fortunately, it landed about 200 yards behind us and nobody was hurt. Well, I'm glad you came back all in one piece, even if the camera didn't. Me too. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Lisa. You're welcome, Rob.